Okay. There's a lot of glare on there, babe. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Saturday edition of Morning Scone, presented by Brock, the Bad News Rugby Clinic, where Brock Rock and Wine is coming up on July 29th. Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Restored Motions, RestoredMotions.com. And ProCharge GV, ProCharGV.com. All right, hope everybody's weekend's off to a great start. Um, uh, thanks so much for being here with us. It's Matt's birthday today, everybody. Oh, it is. As if they couldn't tell from the... Yeah, good morning. Tell them about your morning. I'll tell them. Let the audience build a little. Not sure that everybody is here yet, but they'll be interested. So, uh, LSU Baseball has gotten another player via the transfer portal. It's a player we told you about on Friday's AFR, if you were listening to Friday's AFR, which, of course, you should have been listening to Friday's AFR. Uh, it is UCLA left-handed pitcher Gage Jump. So uh, Jump missed this past season at UCLA due to Tommy John. Uh, the year before, when he pitched with Thatcher Hurd at, uh, at UCLA, he had a 3.86 ERA in seven appearances. Uh, he was a bullpen guy, so he had two saves through just 16 innings. But... Um, yeah, uh, he, you know, was a, um, coming out of high school, was a, an 18th round pick by the Padres. But suffice to say, this is a guy that Jay Johnson knows really well because um, he, uh, you know, Jay saw him in Arizona to, well, I guess, no, he would have been teammates with Hurd two years ago, but familiar with him from coaching out West. So anyway, um, that's another left-handed arm for LSU for this upcoming, uh, for this upcoming season. And, uh, a lot of you have asked about names in the portal and I know everyone's been asking about Chase Burns from Tennessee, but, um, as I was kind of prying around, on this LSU signing class uh, with the draft ahead, um, I finally got some names, and uh, one of them was Gage Jump. Um, and um, uh, the other's Luke Holman. So the, that's Luke Holman's the kid from Alabama. So those are the two that they want out of the portal. They've already got Justin Lohr from his, from Xavier. That's a lefty. Um, and now they got Gage Jump, another lefty. <clears throat> and they want Luke Coleman from Alabama as well. So, uh, yes, they're absolutely pursuing Chase Burns. That would be awesome if they get him um, as well. So um, I'm trying to think if there are a few others that I could tell you about. But... Um, you know, just when you look at the roster for next year, you start looking at the lefties for next year. Um, let me pull it up so I don't leave any out. Now, you know, Riley Cooper told us on AFR that he hopes to sign. He hopes to get drafted and to sign and begin his pro career. Uh, Ackenhausen, a little less committal. Um, more, hey, let's just see what happens. Uh, so he very well could be back. I'm assuming Javen Coleman will be back. Of course, Griffin Herring will be back. Um, I mean, they certainly have a long list of, of lefties. Uh, Nick Bronzini, who we didn't see this year, um, oh, along with Herring, Ackenhausen. Again, I'm assuming Cooper won't be back, but Coleman. And then DJ Primo, as well, as a freshman this year. So that's five lefties. Lower makes six. And then um, Gage Jump makes seven. And then if we look at... If we look at the commits, you know um, you're, you're not going to get um, 
Cameron Johnson here. Whatever. Um, that's the lefty that's going to be a, you know, he'll go early in the draft and, and he'll sign. So you're not, he's a lefty who throws 100. You're not going to get him here. Um, but uh, Kate Anderson uh, has said he, he's not interested in the draft. He's going to show up at LSU. Um, uh, Caden Wilson is a lefty out of Missouri. And then um, Jake Brown is another one who they're kind of, a, he's at a sulfur state player of the year. They're wondering, he's a two-way guy. Like, is he going to show up? I, I, I believe that he's going to, that he is going to end up being here. And then the other is John Cassidy Vanek, who I was told is going Juco. So, um, so he won't be here, but, um, Anyway, so um, so nine is the count right? Nine um, uh, lefties on the on the squad next year. So anyway, all right. Let's say some good mornings here. Uh, yes, it is my birthday today. Forty one years old. Erica has decorated my office. You all can only see a little bit of it. Um, there's this thing on a plate right here. That's the banner behind me. It says happy birthday. There's, there's this, there's happy birthday right here with the cake. Uh, on my chair, she's got happy birthday there. You can see on the chair. So, um, happy birthday on the, on the window over there. So, she went and got me macaroons from Les Amos. I mean, authentic, the best macaroon you'll ever have in the history of your life. Uh, from Les Amos here in Baton Rouge. It's a French bakery. Um, and Erica also gave me the greatest present in the history of presents. <laughs> what? I think I'm going to go show everybody my present. Okay, well, you're gonna have to watch me now. What? Do y'all want to see my present? The presents she got me? Presents? Yes, presents. She got me some pants. Of course, she got me sneakers, two pair, which are lovely. I'm very actually jacked about them. But that's not the great present. Uh, Bart St. Germain, Jordan Mumphrey, uh, Walk of Music, Jump Around by House of Pain. Not bad, Gage Jump. Patrick Landry, Samuel Merrifield, Matt. We're overloaded with lefties with the UCLA guy. The guy from Xavier, Kate Anderson, it's a good problem to have with the remaining staff. Didn't hear your interview with Atkinhaus and how is he approaching the draft? Yeah, so Cooper had said, told us point blank he wants to sign. And Atkinhaus said he's a little more up in the air. That kind of leads me to believe Atkinhaus is going to come back and try to be part of the rotation. Now, you keep adding all these, these pieces, that competition gets pretty fierce. So we shall see. But um, yeah, it, I, I don't foresee it as a problem in any way. Like... If you can keep, you can build that much quality depth. And we saw it this year. Look how long it took to establish roles and find guys that you knew you could count on. So, yes, keep giving me more and more options. Craig Duncan, I have no clue about this new baseball pitcher. Hope JJ is trying to get Burns or Coleman. Yeah, I, I mean, I already told you, Luke Coleman, if, again, if you ever listened to AFR yesterday, Gage Jump and Luke Coleman were the two names that I gave you that they really want. Um, and they've got jump, and my guess is they'll get Holman as well because it's almost like what Jay wants he's going to get. Um, Burns is going to be interesting. LSU or TCU battle there, and Jay tends to win those, but we'll see. Pat Huseman, good morning, everyone. Happy birthday, Scone. Happy birthday to my wife, Samantha Adams Huseman. All right. Samantha and I share a birthday, July 8th. July 8th, fam. That'll wait. July 8th, fam. July 8th, Sam away. Happy birthday to Samantha. Hope she has an awesome day as well. Uh, Jeff McKithin, what's going on? Kevin Simmons, thank you. Uh, Samuel Marifa, Matt, you look like you're 25. <laughs> Did you hear that? Uh, Samuel Marifa said, looking good for your age, you look like you're 25. Happy birthday. Uh, Kathy Hernandez, good morning. Good morning. Okay, Delton Doucette, good morning from Lake Charles. Hunter Picard, what's going on? Uh, Michael Castello, what's good? He said, happy birthday, Drew. It's not Drew's birthday. Look at this, everyone. Drew's birthday is July 18th. Oh, my God. That's so cute. Oh, my God. 
So cute. I need to show you all the uh, Drew decorations. No, they're, they're so not ready. They're so not ready. Thanks. Some of them are ready. I can give them a teaser. Maybe I can show them the front door. Front door? The front door. Well, we got two ladders in front of it. Okay. There's two ladders in front of it. Okay. We gotta leave here in one hour. Oh my God. Um, strong side. Good morning. Damon Gilmore, Zachary Snyder, more Matt headed to Cape Cod end of the month. Where can I get a list of the players and their teams trying to catch some games? Never been. So not sure where to look. Yeah, Zachary. So, um, I know LSU will, uh, announce the guys that are playing on the Cape. Um, uh, Josh Pearson, I know is up there right now, but uh, not a great answer to your question. Cause quite honestly, I haven't looked at who's where. Uh, but I know a lot of those summer league um, assignments are happening. Uh, shout out, Gavin Gidry is playing for the Baton Rouge Rougarou, so that's very cool. Um, hopefully, I get that you know, that helps them draw over at uh, at Goldsby. And I, I'd love to see um, Gidry get an opportunity to play the infield hit too. Uh, Cliff Nelson, good morning. Let's see, Michael, Matt, have you heard or seen the possibility of Floyd being drafted in the first round by the Braves? Um, yeah, I saw that mocked by, uh, it was Keith Law yesterday. Um, uh, oh, no, it was Kyler McDaniel. Kyler McDaniel had, um, Floyd, the 24 to the Braves. Keith Law had Floyd 17 to Baltimore. So, yeah, he's getting a lot of first-round buzz. Kyle Milliken, Matt, how does this year's D-line compare to last year's? Uh, what do you think will be two strengths of the football team and the two weaknesses? So, the D-line is much deeper, especially if you're talking about the interior. Um, remember last year, you really had a three-man rotation. It was Jaquel and Roy, Makai Wingo, and you know, on the interior, and um, uh, Jacoby and Guillory. That was basically your three-man rotation a year ago. Um, this year, of course, Roy's gone, but Wingo's back, uh, Guillory's back, Mason Smith back from injury, and then you added four transfers. Uh, Jordan Jefferson from West Virginia, Paris Shan from Arizona, uh, Lee from Florida, and I'm forgetting one, but you have tremendous numbers. You lose Ali Gay uh, and B.J. Ojolari, but you added Ovi, Ovi Gofu, Braden Swinson, uh, a couple of veteran transfers who have played a lot. They're very excited about Quincy Wiggins um, and his ability to play inside and out. Uh, they're... I mean, they're loaded. They're loaded at that position. Uh, two strengths, two weaknesses. Um, you know, I think they're strong all over the field, man. I don't think they have a weak position group. Um, question I would tell you would be cornerback, just because, and maybe depth at safety. But cornerback, I think, you just it's a question because you have to see who's going to emerge there. Jude San Singh. Can we get another impression of uh, every Delilah call that was gold? So I did a Delilah uh, phone call impression on uh, on Scone and T on Wednesday. Would hi would highly recommend you go check it out if you missed it. Maybe we'll circle back to that, Jude. A little bit of a hurry today because we are going to go have uh, have like an early lunch with me, Erica, and Drew today. So we're going to get out of the house in a little bit. Uh, Spurge, good morning. Thank you so much. Jessica Bennell, good morning. Thank you so much. Travis Michel, thank you. Bud Smith, what's going on? Thank you. Michael Castillo said, did something happen to the volume on YouTube? Not that I'm aware. Um, I think everybody's good. Y'all good with volume? Weston Weaver, Cesar Vasquez, Jeremy Naslach, good morning. All right, birthday coming up on Tuesday. Very good, man. Uh, so it'd be the 11th, July birthdays, man. Joey Metke, good morning. Thanks, y'all. Brant Roban, morning, Scone. Scone and Hurt Ellis, you landed the number two player in Louisiana baseball. Well, he was, he was already committed. Um, you're, you're talking about Kate Anderson, who's the lefty out of Madisonville, and he just announced that he's foregoing the draft, that he's going to show up at school. So he's basically alerted teams not to draft him, that he's, that he's coming to school. So... Um, that's, that's great news. Uh, strong side. Thank you. Um, Greg T wasn't there a season when Maneri didn't have any left-handed pitchers. Now we have nine. Yes, that was the 20, 
uh, I think it was 2019, or was it, it could have been 21, because Coleman was a freshman in that year. So I think it was 19, when they literally did not have a left-handed pitcher on the roster. Like, they didn't have anybody to even throw BP. Um, and I remember they were getting, like, so there was some talk about Daniel Cabrera, like, throwing BP and stuff like that, just to have someone from the left side throw, like, give them a look from the left side. Oh, cool. Carl. So Carl the Cat said, Gidry's only playing infield this summer for batters. Good. That's good to know. Uh, Gavin Montgomery, good morning, Reed Rule, happy birthday. Basketball is now the fourth sport on campus. Any chance they could surprise people or where they'd be at the bottom of the SEC? So, Reed, their roster is dramatically improved from what it was a year ago. Um, I mean, just adding the guards they did. Uh, I mean, Carlos Stewart is literally better than anybody they had in their backcourt a year ago. Um, so yes, I am, you know, you know, Jordan Wright from Vanderbilt, you know, guy who's played in the SEC and been a really good player. Like they are exponentially better, uh, in the backcourt than they were a year ago. I know they added some size, which is good to see. Um, do they have the scores? Do they have the athleticism? We'll see. Probably not enough to be a, a contender in the SEC this year, but are they going to be a dramatically improved team from a year ago? Yes. Yes, they will be. Peter Fenner, good morning. And happy birthday. Pac-12 equals the SEC Farm League. Uh, Gage Jump, well, that's an awesome name. I need to get uh, Sharif on to talk about it. Uh. Andy Boy, hey, Scone, if Cruz doesn't go one because of money, does he get less money at slots lower down? Or is it based on how much a team has for that year to give away? Yeah, so it's a good question. So for those that aren't familiar, um, Wyatt Langford actually now is the betting favorite to be the number one pick. And that's probably a result of exactly what, we were what we've been talking about, which is that Pittsburgh is cheap and doesn't want to pay over slot value, despite the fact that they have the largest draft bonus pool to spend. Uh, and by the way, if you don't spend that money, you lose it. You don't get to, like, save it. So, anyway. Um, so, Wyatt Langford is the betting favorite to be number one. And I've told you all for months, for months, that Washington is hoping Skeens is there for them at number two because they want Paul Skeens. Um, when it seemed like it was a cruise Skeens decision at one or two, at, at one, um, I've told you that people with the Nationals have made it pretty clear that they wanted Skeens at two. So, anyway, I, Skeens I do not see falling past two. So, Cruz, I think, would go three to Detroit in that situation. Um, and to your question about would, would he get less money going third, maybe not. So, like, we'll have to wait and see what... Um, So here you go. Um, here's the, the bonus pools and the slot value. So, all right, slot value for Pittsburgh at one is 9.7 million. The Nationals at number two is 8.9. And then the Tigers at number three is 8.3. So you, I think you probably naturally look at it and say, man, well, if he went number one to Pittsburgh, he'd get 9-7. And if he goes number three to Detroit, he gets 8-3. That's a difference of $1.4 million. And that's true unless Pittsburgh is telling Wyatt Langford, hey, slot here is 9-7, but we'll give you 8-2, which they might be. You know what I mean? If that's what they're saying, they feel like they can save a million, million and a half bucks there. Dylan's like, well, I'm not taking less than slot. Like, being the number one pick isn't that important. So, then the top, like, if the Nationals take Skeens and the Tigers are sitting there at three and slot value there is 8.3 and they decide that they want Dylan Cruz and it's like Dylan Cruz or Max Clark and Dylan says, I'm not taking 8.3. I want 9.5. Well, do you pay Dylan Cruz 1.2 over slot? I'm throwing out numbers. I really don't know. So, my point is a lot of that is negotiation. It's, it's, 
and it happens very quickly too, because um, it's not like 15 minutes on the clock, like in, in the NFL draft. So it's very, it's very different how that all uh, plays out and goes very quickly. It's like, will you take this? It's yes or no. And then you're on, you're on to the next, right? So anyway, but like Detroit, for example, they're, their total bonus pool is, so Detroit has the second most money to spend. Pittsburgh is one at 16.1 million. That's, so that's over their top 10 rounds. Uh, and Detroit's two at 15.7. So do they, and then the Nationals are three at 14.5. So it's a pretty big drop um, from two to three. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But there's a chance that Dylan Cruz could go third and make more than Wyatt Langford at one. Some people just want it to, for the the flex of saying they were the first pick, so they take less. I had that man. I had that conversation with Anthony Renato. Um, um, Renato, he he told me this story, and I'm I might mess up some of the details, but. Um, in that draft, if you remember in 2010, R Renato said he, he had his number, right? He had his number, whatever it was. And I think he was a Boris client too. And they had gone in saying, look, don't care where it is, this is our number. And so he got a call like middle of round one and someone was offering him less, like, like half the number or something like that or three quarters of the number, something like that. But it was an opportunity to be a first round pick. And he talked about like, he almost took it, but his dad told him, he's like, Anthony, no, like we, we went through this. Like you're, this is why you have an agent is to advise you on this sort of stuff. And we have our, our number. And that's like, that's what you all agreed upon. And so they passed and he ended up going like, 31 or 32, I want to say like in the, in the compensatory picks and got, and got exactly the number he wanted. But it was like, do you budge for the vanity of saying your first round pick or do you want your number? And, you know, got different guys made different decisions. So anyway, uh, thank you for all the, uh, the birthday wishes. Donald A. Me, Hunter Picard, Bruce Shales. Appreciate y'all. Um, Peter Fenwick, Lou, what does Florida and California do differently to produce so many pro baseball players? Population. Um, they're massive, massively populated states. Weather's good, they play year-round. Uh, Brett DeGro, good morning. LSU Coyote, what an awkward interview with Mason Smith yesterday. Matt, you seem to make everyone feel uncomfortable. That's weird. That was a great conversation. He and I had a great talk. Um... We spent like 25 minutes talking and he hung out. We chatted for another about half an hour after as well. Sorry, I didn't like it. Thought, I thought he did great. Irfan Sayad, Ryder Jones, Andy Boy. Andy Boy said, I didn't think it was weird. Yeah, and like that's just someone who doesn't like me and so they're trying to troll in the chat and I, whatever. Um, let's see. You mostly just ignore people like that. Mark, what's going on? Monster Jam at New Orleans tonight. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Do you foresee Jaden Daniels in the Heisman Trophy race by midseason? Um, yeah, I, I do. Uh, because I think midseason, I mean, he's in the trophy race now, by the way, Mark. He, um, but he's got the second best odds. He's tied with two other players for the second best odds behind Caleb Williams. So he's in it now. So... Um, but yeah, I think LSU will be undefeated, um, because I think they'll beat Florida State and they'll be undefeated midseason and, you know, be in that, so. Uh, Bart St. Germain, happy birthday, Matt. Thank you, Bart. Appreciate it, man. Gary, happy, happy birthday, Matt. Good morning, Tiger Nation. Jay knows West Coast talent as good as anyone. No, absolutely. That's, I'm certain, I don't know this whole backstory, but I'm certain that's someone Jay scouted and recruited coming out of high school when he, when Gage jumped, picked UCLA. And, um, so, so a, a talent he's very familiar with, no doubt. 
Uh, do you think Josh Pearson's brother makes it to campus after next season? That's a good question. Um, and I, I don't know. It's going to really depend on how his senior year goes and what his draft prospects are. But, I mean, he'd have the opportunity to play at least one year with his brother. And I know they love LSU and would want to be here and all that stuff. But sometimes it comes down to it's money. Uh, Brad Campo, good morning. I sent the Florida AD an email for having my son evicted from the last game of the College World Series. He was just doing the gator chomp and wiping his eyes to the AD. No reply, of course. Okay. Uh, Chuck, bro, what's going on? Good to see you yesterday, Chuck. Uh, Kerry Hughes, good morning. How would you rank these Baton Rouge high school athletes in order? Oh, okay, hang on. Simone, Marcus Spears, Lester Earl, Michael Clayton, Work Dunn, Taz. Oh. Um, you talking about when they were in high school? Like, if you're, I mean, is that what you're like? Is that what you're asking? When they were in high school, or based on what they went on to do? Um, because if it was like, you know, leaving and what they went on to do. I think you'd look at, oh, for when they were in high school. Um, I don't know. They're different sports, too. I'm going to pass. How about they're all tied? Sorry. <laughs> I'd have to give it more thought, Kerry. Sorry, man. A little bit of a, a, little bit of a rush today, too. Patrick Kaysan, good morning. Hey, Dad, good morning. Appreciate all the birthday wishes, y'all. Jason Horn, good morning. What a game last night. Uh... Not so much for your Yankees. First time the Cubs have beat the Yankees in Yankee Stadium. Yeah, I have I hate to say this because we're not even at the All-Star break yet. <clears throat> but, um, man, I... Um, um, I've kind of emotionally checked out on the Yankees already. This is the earliest I've done this in the season in a long time. It's a bummer, too. Your fun say odd, Ryder Jones. Uh, let's see, Carson Kilgore. Do teams not trade up and down in the first round like Atlanta or Houston could jump and snag a Skeens or Cruz? Um, yeah, Andy Boyce said you can't trade in the draft. Um, you can trade prospects. I mean, after you have draft rights and stuff like that. Um, but... Um, There's just, there's, um, um, first of all, you don't have a lot of time in the draft. And the only picks that are actually tradable uh, are um, the competitive balance round picks. Those are the only ones that are tradable. Uh, Kelly Gross, good morning. Uh, let's see, Wild Staff with Cubs, Yankees had no idea. Well, I mean, remember, until interleague play, they would have never had the opportunity to play in Yankee Stadium. So that opportunity has only existed, you know, over the last 20 years or so. Um, yeah, you would have thought for, at some point the Cubs would have won a game. Matt, how Tommy protect Cruz in the lineup is Jay going after someone in the portal like protect White next season. So, Bruce, you had that question. I actually think it's it's the other way around. Um, I think Cruz benefited Tommy White because teams chose to pitch around Dylan and deal with Tommy White, which is why he was second in the country in RBI. Um, like for example, Dylan Cruz on the season. Had Dylan Cruz on the season walked 71 times. Okay. He walked 71 times. The next closest on the team was Gavin Dugas with 44. <laughs> I mean, that's absurd. Like, to walk 71 times is absurd. So teams chose not to pitch to Dylan and instead... Pitched to Tommy White, and that's why Tommy White ended up with 100 RBI. Um, 
Brennan Huff, LSU Bama last night was epic. Can't believe we went for two and one. So good. Um, yeah, so last night, yesterday was the LSU takeover day on, uh, on SEC Network, and they wrapped it up with uh, LSU Bama. I watched a bunch of it. It was cool. Peter Fenner, Craig, Squirrel, Landry, good morning, Irfan Seah, Stephanie Gray, uh, Grice. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Uh, Brian Pitton, good morning. Shelby Kelly, crazy stat. Phillies are 23-7 and seven since June 2nd and still lost three games in the division race against Atlanta. Wow. Braves are scorched earth right now. They are. They're hitting the crap out of the ball, too. All right, y'all. Um, I got to get going here. Uh, oh, I got to show you all this. Uh, Facebook, unfortunately, I have to... You know what? Here's what I'm going to do, Facebook. Hang on. I am going to uh, copy the link... Boom, boom. Um, so Facebook, I just posted the YouTube link. Um, click that because I can't take this device, the Surface, in there I'm, to show you the birthday present Erica got me. I will take YouTube because it's on my phone. That's easy. I can just grab it. So if you're on Facebook, thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the page, share the post, all that sort of stuff. Um, and we'll see you later. But come over to YouTube. I'll go show you what Erica got me for my birthday. It's kind of ridiculous, but I love it. Okay, see you Facebook, YouTube. Hang on. We're, we're not done, YouTube. Hang on. All right. All right. So many of you know that... Uh, wait a second here. See if some of the Facebook people come over to YouTube. I'm sure many of them will. Okay. So... Oops, sorry. Many of you know that uh, in recent... Uh, oh, look, Erica. Decorations. Happy birthday there. Happy birthday there. Happy birthday on my chair. Got the 41 thing right there. Oh, I don't know if I should show you all this. That's what she's working on the door for Drew's party. I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's Drew and Nikki and Minnie. Yeah. She's a little extra. Anyway... That's my office. Oh, should I show you all this? I probably shouldn't, but look, look at her. Look at this is all the this is all the decoration she's doing for Drew's party. She hand makes everything, so this whole area has just been over overwhelmed. She did all that. It's coming along. She's probably going to be upset that I showed you all that because it's kind of a mess. Okay, y'all know that I'm a a sneakerhead and. I had had many, many sneakers just strewn about. So Erica has this big walk-in closet in our bedroom. I have like a little pocket, a little closet with a pocket door over there, but she has a giant walk-in closet and she has sacrificed some of her space. Check this out. This is what she gave. <laughs> She bought the storage containers and set it up in here. And she said, by the way, I have more shoes over here. These are the two that she gave me for my birthday, those two pair right there. Um, but anyway, so <laughs> she said, uh, she said, <laughs> this is all her stuff. She said, there's 12 more containers showing up tomorrow. <laughs> so good. Yay. <laughs> That's so ridiculous, but so awesome. They were just like on the floor and strewn about, and I'd taken over a closet in the guest room uh, with some shelves and everything, but uh, I love it. It's so good. I mean, we got all... Look at all that. She got them all pointing in the same direction as well. Proud of her. She did great. Yep, 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 yep. So she said she, she said, she said she was up until like 4.30 doing this. <laughs> it's so good though. Anyway. All right. I appreciate y'all for watching. Thanks so much. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Peace.